minutes for the road. Alright. Let's do it. Woo! Hell yeah. Hi, my name is Johan Gilchrist and I'm a PhD candidate studying explosive volcanism at the University of British Columbia. Today is a day in my life. Oh, I love that one. That's amazing. Ah, this is not fair that I get to do this before work. And that's it. Time to go to work. I feel so awake. Got some new ideas for experiments. So uh, yeah, let's go home, get my stuff, head to the lab. Honey, I'm home. I'm gonna run to campus, okay? Okay, how was it? It was good. I did some cool things, didn't kill myself. Good workout. Nice. All right, can I also use my trusty steed to get to the office. This is a beautiful secret parking spot. Free parking. Gotta get back by five though, I'll get towed. Coming up, this is the Earth Ocean Atmospheric Science Building, the old one. This is the back entrance here. Look at that, 11 on the dot. This is the lab, it's where the magic happens. So the majority of my research work has been conducting analog experiments. And analog experiments are where we use scaling laws, physical scaling laws, like the ones you can see here on the whiteboard, to take the source conditions, the environmental conditions that we think are occurring on a volcano during an eruption and scale them down to the laboratory scale so that we can then run experiments in these meter cube water tanks and simulate those conditions but at a much smaller scale and in time and space. Each of these plexiglass boxes is a different experiment. I don't know if you could see earlier, that's our deposit. And uh, that's a camera, we usually have a camera right here, some light source there, camera there. And then I stand up there and mix it all up while we inject that sand water fountain. That's the delivery system. So then it shoots up out of there and it builds this deposit over about a, min a minute of the experiment. That's, it takes like, sometimes it takes six to eight hours to set up one of these experiments and then it only runs for one minute and there's a bunch of action. But thank God we got these super slow-mo cameras to capture it all. And this is powerful because it gives us a lot more control to investigate some of the physical processes that govern the overall behavior of these eruptions and the hazards that they're going to pose for surrounding communities. So today I'll be attending a series of lightning talks by other members of our department here. This is where we get research assistants, graduate students, and postdocs to present their research to the whole department. Check it out. So we'll begin with my colleague Colin Rowell's talk on explosive volcanism and mixing of these volcanic plumes with the atmosphere, which is very similar to the work that I do. So it's a day full of volcanoes. I hope you like it. Well, those are a bunch of really good talks by all my fellow grads, RAs, and um, postdocs. It's really cool. I think we saw like seven or more talks. It's rare that you get to see everything that everybody's doing in, in the department, so that was really cool to see. Time to get some lunch before the next meeting. Okay, no time to get lunch before my next meeting. That's, that's kind of how it goes some days, just got to be flexible. Okay, now on to our weekly lab group meeting of the Dr. Mark Jelinek and Dr. Katherine Johnson geophysics group here at EOAS at UBC. I'm doing a day in the life of a scientist, so everybody say hi. 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 How much do you guys love being scientists? <laughs> Today we have our former PhD student and dear friend, Dr. Tamar Aubrey, who's at Cambridge and he's gonna give us a talk on his continuing work on the effects of volcanoes on climate and vice versa. Um, okay, so that's how volcano impact climate. So you have, a, you have a big volcanic eruption, it's sending ash and gas in the atmosphere, and then this becomes sulfate aerosols, and these aerosols essentially reflect some sunlight, which triggers cooling at the surface. So that was an awesome meeting. It was great to see the other lab mates, 
you know, we all miss each other a lot. And that's all we get really, these Zoom meetings now. Yeah, it's tough times in the pandemic. You know, the science is a bit slower, but for me, I mean, it's it's good too, because I've been able to focus, I'm really focused on my science and get it moving and stuff. You know, weird times, but I'm hungry. It's uh, 2 p.m. Woo, let's eat. So here's a lightning fast tour of my walk from my lab to my favorite coffee shop on campus. Can I get a, do a tuna salad sandwich? Thank you, yeah, excellent. Cool. Oh, piping hot coffee and piping hot tuna sandwich. What a gorgeous day it is. So after I get my afternoon coffee, I sit down, I do some data entry, some data analysis, and I have a little dance break because I'm jamming out to some great tunes. And then I play with some theory. And today I'm gonna play with some theory on the basis of some ideas I had during my morning mountain bike ride. I hope they work out. I'm gonna turn back to some field data I collected in 2018 at a volcano called Sabancaya in Peru. And I'm measuring the source conditions at the volcanic vent during the eruptions we saw there to get the velocity and the mass of erupted rocks that came out at the same time. And using those measurements, I can help constrain the experiments I'm doing here in the lab with these natural conditions that we were able to measure at the volcano during an eruption. So this three-pronged approach, using field work to figure out what the natural conditions are, scaling them to the laboratory scale to run experiments to investigate in much greater detail but with a lot more control than in nature, and then using those experiments to help validate sophisticated numerical models, and then running those models for those conditions we saw in the field to make very precise predictions of where the mass is going to be transported along Earth's surface or in the atmosphere during eruption and ultimately see if we can use this to help save lives during these eruptions. Yeah, I think I'm going to go home so my car doesn't get towed and have dinner with Minar and uh, maybe do a little bit of work after that and looking forward to then, I don't know, maybe watch something with Minar, get in bed, and read a book and pass out. All right. So today was a really good day for my science and my research. I started with a mountain bike ride that was very peaceful, uh, rejuvenated my blood in the morning, and actually because of that, allowed me to develop a bunch of ideas I've had about my analog experiments that I've been running in the lab. And ultimately, today was awesome because I learned more about how volcanoes affect climate and how this is going to evolve during my lifetime as we try to mitigate climate change globally. Wow. Check that out. And to do that, it requires a fair bit of sacrifice for example, pursuing a career in academia, being far from my parents while I do this, being ready to move around for the next gig, which could be a postdoc anywhere around the world, and potentially being separated from my partner physically anyways. So why do I do all of it? Well, I feel this great satisfaction at the end of the day after doing this work that I think is really going to help protect humans from some of these natural volcanic disasters, but also the climate change issue itself. Not bad. Not a bad day to be a scientist. But now it's time for dinner. Ooh, and some wine, courtesy of the lovely Minar. Thank you. Ding ding. Mmm. Oh yeah. This was well deserved today. <laughs>